Hello, pre-calc kids. Welcome back to another lesson in AP Pre-Calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to focus in on what's called composition of functions. This first lesson, we're going to break it up into two lessons. This first lesson is a pretty basic thing where we're just learning how to compose the values of functions. And in the next lesson, we'll focus more on the domain of a composed function, as well as what actually is the function itself, like coming up with a rule for it. So the first one, again, hopefully this will be a little bit easier for you. I'm going to treat this like you have never seen this. So some of you may have been exposed to some of this in an Algebra 2 class. It just depends on where you live and what your standards were when you took your Algebra 2. So let's start off with this. Basically, the idea of composing a function is just you take one function and you sub it into the other function. So when you see this here, f of g of x, you read it as f of g of x. That's what this is, f of g of x. That's how you say it. What it is, is it means that you take the output of g and that's the input for f. So the output of g is the input for the function f. Let me show you what I mean here. So here we're gonna have uh, f of g of five. We need to figure out first, what does g of five equal? So you take the function g, g is three minus x, so it's gonna be three minus, the x value was a five, so three minus five, and that equals negative two. So that negative two right there, that negative two is the g of five. So now I say f of, instead of g of five, I'm going to say negative two. So now what is f of negative two? That is, here's the function f, x squared minus four. So negative two squared minus four, four minus four is zero. So that's my answer for this one. That's how you do a composition of functions when you're just working with the values. And that's what we're doing today is just working with the numbers. So not too bad. Now this one, I've switched it up. So you, it's not f of g, it's g of f. So this time we'll start with the function f and we plug in the five. So there's my function f, x squared minus four, five squared minus four. So that's 25 minus four, that's 21. And again, so the 21 is the same thing as f of five. So the output of f of five is 21. So 21 becomes the input for the function g. So that's g of 21. And then that equals three minus 21. And that's negative 18. And there's my answer. Now, of course, we can't make things too easy because uh, we're mathematicians here. And so we're gonna make things just a little confusing. And that is that you can also rewrite this another way. f of g of x can also be written as this weird thing f of g of x. This little circle there is not an O, so don't say fog. <laughs> it's not fog x. It is f of g of x. It's just an operator. This mathematical symbol is just saying we are going to do, take the function f and compose it with the function g. That's all it is. It means exactly the same thing as this. Just depends on the textbook, depends on the teacher. They may refer to it. And to be honest, you'll probably see both. I've put both in this practice and depending on the exam and how the problems are worded, you might see it like this. So just be careful about that. I prefer this this way because it makes more sense to me the input is g of x into the function f but you'll see it that way too okay next one now let's take a table of values we're doing exactly the same thing so nothing tricky here we're just going to figure out first what is g of zero let's figure out that what the output of g of zero is so if x is a zero here's my x is zero then g of x is three so g of zero is three and now we can say f of three, because that's what g of zero was. And then that equals, so you go down here to x equals three, and the function f is two. So boom, that's the answer to that one. Okay, let's do these two. Why don't you pause and see if you can come up with the answers on your own. Just remember this one right here. What does that mean, this little, this little circle? That means we're taking f of g of negative two. So just figure out what g of negative two is, use the table, figure out numbers four and five. So pause the video now. All right, you can see my answers here. Hopefully you got a three and then a seven. Just check your work to see if you uh, followed the chart correctly. This one here, the trick was that we were doing the function f first. So you had to figure out f of two and then plug that one in to figure out what the g value was for the output of g. All right, the next set of problems is we're doing the same type of thing, but now we're gonna use some graphs. And so when you do this, you could just identify which graph is which. So the function here, is this one that looks like a parabola is f of x, and this piecewise linear function is g of x. So we're gonna take g of one first. So where is that? g of one, there's the function g, x equals, if the input's a one, the output is a y. So that's negative one for a y value. Then we'll say f of negative one, 
and f of negative 1, where is that one? So here's x equals a negative 1 is the input. The output is a 3 for the function f. So 3 is the answer for that one. Okay, so pause the video. Try to do these again. This is the same type of idea. You're just looking for the input and the output depending on the graphs. You're, you, you want the y value for the output. So tr pause the video now. Try these on your own, 7 and 8. We'll see if you get the right answers. And there's your answers here, 0, and then a negative 1. You can pause the video and just check your work if you need to just to see that you got the right values for this one. Uh, okay. And then the last thing, see this lesson is pretty quick and easy. The last thing is this thing called the identity function. So before we talk about identity, identity function, let's recall some things that you will probably have heard of before, and that's the additive identity. The additive identity is zero. Why is that? Well, if you take any number and you add zero, you get the identity, you get the same number. So additive identity is zero because if you add zero, you always get the same thing. The multiplicative identity is one, because if you take any number and multiply by one, it gives you the same number. So it's called identity because it gives you the same thing. There is an identity function that we work with for composing functions. So it's the same idea. If you have a function that is f of x equals x, so if f of x equals x and you compose it with any other function, then you get that function. So here's what that means. If f of x equals x, then f of g of x has to equal g of x. Okay, why? Because if something's getting plugged into the x, if something gets plugged in right there, like g of x, then what does that become? It becomes g of x. So f of x would equal g of x. Okay, <laughs> That's, that sounds a little confusing. Like I'm confusing myself when I say it. It's actually a pretty simple property and a pretty simple concept. It's just that this thing gets replaced with the new function that you're plugging in. Okay, but that's an important one. I have seen some ones on uh, on AP Classroom. I've seen a problem or two where it deals with this. Uh, there's not a lot of practice problems we would do, we would have, so there's not you're not going to see thing in the packet with that, uh, but it's an important one to understand. It's, it's really simple if you just remember that. Okay, this is uh, Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that master check, and I'll see you back in the next lesson where we'll cover the last part of composition of functions.